My name is Sharon Hutchinson and I'm a professor of epidemiology and population health. Uh, and as an illustration of the public health research we do at Glasgow Caledonian University, I'm going to talk to you about the work that we've done to inform Scotland's strategy on hepatitis C. And first I'd like to set the scene of how our research aligns with the Sustainable Development Goals. In September 2015, the United Nations adopted these goals in order to end poverty, ensure prosperity for all and protect the planet. And GCU was the first to adopt the uh, SDGs as a framework for its research strategy, addressing the goals through six broad uh, research themes tackling three societal challenges of inclusive societies, healthy lives and sustainable environments. And one of the research, uh, six research themes is public health. My research programme aligns with the public health theme at GCU and is focused on the epidemiology of global viruses such as HIV and viral hepatitis and evaluation of interventions to prevent, diagnose and treat infection with these viruses. And this aligns with the Sustainable Development Goal 3 regarding good health and well-being and specifically the target set by the United Nations on communicable diseases, which were to end the AIDS epidemic and to combat viral hepatitis by 2030. Now, viral hepatitis, um, which I'll focus on in this presentation, is a, is a major communicable disease, which causes well in excess of a million uh, deaths each year from cirrhosis and liver cancer. And in sharp contrast to uh, other major diseases such as HIV, TB and malaria, you can see here from this graph that the numbers of deaths from viral hepatitis uh, uh, were increasing uh, year on year uh, on the run up to 2015. So aligned to the United Nations Development Priorities, uh, WHO has set um, uh, ambitious targets to reduce deaths from viral hepatitis by 65% and new infections by 90% by 2030. So this represents the global policy context in relation to viral hepatitis. Hepatitis C is a blood-borne virus and in uh, resource-rich countries it is most commonly spread through injecting drug use and the reuse of uh, contaminated injection equipment. And Scotland was one of the first countries to recognise hepatitis C as a major public health concern related to the rise in, in injecting drug use in the um, uh, early 1980s. And this is a, a paper here on the left hand side we had published over 15 years ago, which predicted what would happen in terms of consequences of infection and uh, rise in the burden of liver disease uh, related to hepatitis C if we did nothing to uh, increase our efforts to prevent, diagnose and treat infection. And the research that we did to estimate the scale of the problem and potential impact of interventions informed Scotland's uh, action plan on hepatitis C which has been applauded by uh, interna international agencies, notably uh, here on the right, uh, the Global Commission on Drugs produced a report on how the war on drugs and the repressive drug policies had fueled the epidemic of hepatitis C. And their report featured Scotland as a best practice example of an evidence-based response. And our work on hepatitis C has been done in close partnership with Public Health Scotland, which is the lead uh, national agency responsible for protecting and improving the health and well-being of the Scottish population. But also we work closely with other academic institutions and uh, organisations responsible for delivering services in the NHS and local authorities, uh, civil society groups, as well as government. And a good example of our partnership working was the hosting of the first World Hepatitis 
summit in Glasgow during 2015. And this was a summit launched by uh, WHO and uh, the World Hepatitis Alliance, supported by Scottish Government, Public Health Scotland and ourselves at GCU. Now, summit provided the opportunity for governments and civil society groups from around the world uh, to come together and share their learning from countries like Scotland who had uh, already developed a national strategy on viral hepatitis. I'm now going to guide you through a case study of how our research has more recently informed Scotland's strategy on hepatitis C and particularly the delivery of new direct acting antiviral therapies. And these therapies first became available in 2014 and were heralded a, a game changer in the ambition to eliminate hepatitis C. Not only were they highly effective, with evidence from cl clinical trials showing over 90% uh, of patients uh, cleared infection, but were also um, simple to administer, of relatively short uh, duration, and patients experienced little in the way of side effects. Um, they, however, came at a cost with prices in the range of £20,000 to £50,000 per patient uh, were initially uh, listed. And in the context of the vast numbers of people that were infected, um, around 70 million people uh, globally, uh, with uh, 200,000 estimated uh, in the UK, uh, countries could, could just not afford to treat everyone living with hepatitis C, at least in the short uh, short term. And to inform the delivery of these new therapies, the Scottish Government established an expert group to generate recommendations on the best use of funding to treat hepatitis C in Scotland and deliver optimal public health gain from the use of these new therapies. And myself and fellow researcher Hamish Innes from Glasgow Caledonian University, we were members of this advisory group and we were uh, specifically tasked with providing the uh, epidemiological evidence to inform the recommendations. And in our synthesis of evidence, we drew on a number of sources of uh, data. First, we analysed data from our enhanced surveillance on people diagnosed with hepatitis C in Scotland and seeking a specialist care. There are 18 centres across Scotland that provide such a service and we coordinate the collation of data across these centres and that provides key intelligence on the extent, nature and response to hepatitis C treatment. And these data are held at Public Health Scotland and through record linkage to other healthcare data such as hospital cancer and death records, we can quantify the extent of morbidity and mortality among people with hepatitis C and also the impact of treatment on clinical outcomes. And this uh, epidemiological information can feed into mathematical models which forecast the trajectory of the epidemic in Scotland and potential impact of uh, different treatment strategies. A range of research was used to inform the strategy to scale up new hepatitis C therapies in Scotland and I've selected here just two key pieces of research examining the clinical and public health benefit of hepatitis C therapies. The first was a large cohort study of over 3,000 uh, hepatitis C infected patients in Scotland, followed up for uh, an average of five years. And this was one of the largest studies at that time, which had examined liver related outcomes associated with successful uh, treatment. And unlike previous studies, we evaluated the short-term benefit of therapies according to whether patients had mild or more advanced uh, stage of liver disease. And this statistical analysis revealed that the short-term benefit of therapy was greatest for patients with moderate to severe liver disease. So this was a key piece of evidence to form my prioritisation strategy in the immediate rollout of these new treatments. The other key research undertaken was a mathematical modelling study uh, to simulate and forecast the population level impact of a different uh, prioritisation strategies for scaling up these new but expensive therapies. 
and we were able to draw upon a vast array of epidemiological data from Scotland's public health surveillance systems, uh, which are lacking in, in other countries. And these were used to uh, parameterize the model. And we also adopted a dynamic approach whereby we, we modeled both uh, transmission of infection uh, and also disease progression simultaneously. And on the right hand side here, these are the results uh, of the modeling work, which indicated that um, treatment of uh, infected patients, uh, particularly those with moderate to severe liver disease, these needed to be um, uh, scaled up, increased uh, threefold uh, to make a, a, a major reduction here, a 75% reduction in incidence of um, uh, liver failure associated with hepatitis C within a, a short period of time of five years. Um, and the results of this work were published in the BMJ journal, GUT. And these key research findings directly informed Scottish Government's policy, published uh, first in 2015, on prioritising the new hepatitis C therapies to those with moderate to severe liver disease. And the report published makes uh, reference to the modelling work undertaken and that a minimum of 1,500 people per year needed to be treated to, re to reduce the incidence of liver failure by 75%. So our research was, was used to inform the setting of national targets in Scotland on both treatment numbers and on disease. So what impact has there been on uh, clinical practice? And we can monitor and evaluate that through our public health surveillance systems. And these tell us how many people have been initiated onto hepatitis C treatment each year, and how many have cleared or were essentially cured of their infection. And we know that the national targets on treatment have been exceeded each year uh, between 2015 and 2019. And the four years since the introduction of the new therapies, um, almost 7,000 people were initiated onto treatment in Scotland and over 6,000 were cured of their infection. And in line with the government's policy, the scale up in new therapies was greatest uh, for those with more advanced uh, liver disease. As you can see here on the, the right hand side of the slide, for those with cirrhosis who are at greatest risk of developing uh, liver failure and liver cancer, we observed a tenfold rise in the numbers of these patients uh, that cleared and were cured of their infection. And as a result of the major scale up in hepatitis C therapy, particularly to, do, to those with moderate to severe uh, liver disease, um, uh, since the introduction of these new direct acting antivirals. And as we predicted would happen from our modeling work, the numbers of people presenting uh, for the first time to hospital with hepatitis C related liver failure um, which of course was, was rising year on year prior to the introduction of these new therapies in 2014. Um, uh, the new cases of liver failure reduced by uh, close to 70% uh, between 2014 and 2018. So a major impact on uh, serious uh, liver disease. And through a time series analysis, which we published in the, the BMJ journal GUT, um, an estimated 330 cases of liver failure had been averted in Scotland uh, in the first uh, four years uh, since the introduction of these new therapies. Now, the lifetime cost of managing a case of liver failure is around uh, £95,000. So the 330 cases averted it translates to roughly £30 million um, uh, expense um, that has been avoided by the NHS.
So this represents major health benefit from an evidence-based public health strategy. Uh, and our research, which quantifies the impact of the initial short-term strategy on new hepatitis C therapies. And this has gone on to inform uh, Scotland's recently published um, hepatitis C elimination strategy. And here, the Scottish Government has endorsed uh, new targets uh, to eliminate uh, infection and disease uh, by the year 2024. And so I hope this case study has helped to illustrate the important role that research has in both informing and also evaluating public health policy and practice.